Hello, everyone. Welcome to Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pete Castanis. Uh, this is episode 113, season five. Today's date is March 20th, 2022. Uh, first day of spring. Uh, yay. It's finally arrived. It's, it's going to be a beautiful day today. Uh, today's episode, I will talk about my tribute to Mary D. She worked at uh, WGN TV Channel 9 for many, many years, and she was a delight. And uh, she passed away uh, on March 16th, and that was a very sad day for Chicago. I will discuss my memories of her and her life. Also, uh, on the program, I will discuss the bakery restaurant. Uh, a lot of people don't remember, but it was very well known. Uh, back then. <laughs> so uh, I'll discuss the chef and the owner and the restaurant itself. And uh, you know, it should be a lot of fun. Right now, the com- the program will go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Perfection Gain. Uh, if you hear, listen to the commercial, and uh, you will probably remember it. It's from Lakeside Toys. And this is from Late 70s, yeah, I think late 70s, ni- late 1970s, excuse me. So uh, it's also with Superfection. So no- that's uh, another puzzle game. So here it is. Enjoy. When you're into perfection, keep on your toes. You have to be quick, because here's how it goes. Push the plunger down, set the timer, get the pieces in place. Don't be slow, be perfection. You've got to move on fast, for the pieces pop up before you put in the last. And that's perfection. And for a greater challenge, try Superfection. 32 puzzle shapes to assemble in place. It can drive you wacko. Perfection, Superfection. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Perfection. Uh, I had this game. No, I'm sorry. I did not have Perfection. I had Superfection. The strange reason I had Superfection was it was a very, the uh, blocks, the puzzles were very colorful, I remember. And I got that as a Christmas present mm, probably when I was 10 or 11. And I saw it on television. I begged my mother to buy it for me. She said no, but she did buy it for Christmas for me. So that's uh, that worked out well. And uh, I played the game with my brothers and myself, and it was a lot of fun. You know, it had a timer, you know, like a like a kitchen timer, and then you had to put all the puzzles together. And if it didn't, they would all pop out, and you're going to start all over again. So. Um, I never played the regular perfection, so it's still available. Uh, you could buy it on Amazon or find it on eBay or any toy store. I like Toys R Us. Uh, I, good luck with that. They're not, I heard they're coming back. They're, I don't know, it's a mess. So, um, yeah, if you missed a game, I'm sure it's the same. So, uh, I don't know about Super Perfection. I have no idea, but it's, uh, it's fun. And it's from Lakeside Toys. Okay. At the beginning of the program, I'm going to discuss uh, my tribute to Mary D., uh, who worked at Channel 9 for many years, and also talk about the bakery restaurant and uh, its owner and chef. And uh, I will talk about him and the restaurant and its famous recipes, particularly one. Uh, before I get started, uh, I just want to make a quick note that uh, this coming week is my one-year anniversary of my podcast. I think it was launched about March, March something, March 21st, 22nd, around there. 20, I think March 24th was the launching date, and I did my first episode. And I remember doing it. I was so nervous. It sound, if you listen to the first episode, I sound like uh, I sounded terrible, but I could do some editing, but you know. I think a lot of, I've got some feedback from people and they say that you sound natural. You just sound like yourself. I don't want to sound flashy like that. You sound like a regular human being. So I leave it at that. Uh, For the anniversary episode, I think I'll do it maybe Tuesday or next weekend. We'll see. Uh, I will do something special. Uh, Here's a hint. I will talk about some, it's a, a Chicago favorite. That's the end. So uh, I think everyone will be very pleased about that. Okay. First off, I'm going to talk about the bakery restaurant. 
Now, the Baker restaurant is uh, was a very famous restaurant. Uh, it was in the Lincoln Park uh, neighborhood. And uh, I'm trying to, you know, uh, there's like some discrepancy of the of the address. So uh, someone said it was at uh, 2214 North Lincoln Avenue and uh, on the north side. I think it was or 2218 North Lincoln, but I think it's 2214. And uh, the, sh the owner and the chef, his name was Louis Sazmari. I hope I pronounced his name. Forgive me. You know, and uh, he was um, he was not born in this country. He was from he was born. He was like uh, he was Hungarian, and uh, he was born June second, nineteen nineteen. And uh, they were escaping. That was during World War One, and they had the Hungarian Romanian War, and he was traveling with his parents. And uh, they arrived at Budapest in Hungary, and uh, he uh, went to college. He received a master's degree in journalism and a doctorate in psychology. That's what it was claimed. And uh, he was a, he was a psychologist to the Hungarian army men, and uh, you know he was very uh, very supportive. You know, because you know when you're in the war, you're just shell shocked and you know depressed and it's terrible. Anyway, he wrote manuals, uh, and then he wrote one for cooking. And then he enrolled, he enrolled in a chef's school in uh, Budapest, and he learned an advanced course, and then he learned how to cook. Then, um, let's see, and then he came to the United States in 1951 and spoke no English. No English at all. I guess he, you know, he had to start. This was like my dad, you know, because he came in 1952 yeah, from Greece. Uh, but the difference between him and my father is my father never went to school. Uh, my, I don't know, my grandmother never sent him. I don't know the reason why. And uh, so my dad was illiterate. So that was tough. That was very tough. That's why he wanted me and my brothers to enroll in college and have a better life. And I'm glad he did that. And uh, he arrived in New York, and uh, and then he worked at uh, several jobs. He became a short order cook, and then worked his way up. And then he started, and then he used his uh, culinary skills to cater to like the rich people on the East Coast. And then um, in 1959, he moved to Chicago, and he worked for the Armor, and uh, it was a, a Armor and Company company that was a meatpacking uh, co uh, company in Chicago, like I said before, and they, and they uh, made frozen foods at that time. That was very, uh, also, be, and it also includes Stouffer's, which is still made today, you know, and uh, his classic uh, was frozen spinach souffle, and that's what Mr. S uh, Louis Sus Susmari created that that was one of that and some were used by nasa by the astronauts and uh you know when they you know when they go up in space and they have the frozen food there you know, that's very interesting anyway uh then then he just decided to open a restaurant and then he opened the restaurant in 1963 the year i was born and he opened the bakery and that was called like uh it was uh didn't take off right away, but it was very exotic, and they had uh, something different in Chicago. And uh, it took a little time, and then it just it became one of the most popular places to eat. You couldn't even get reservations; it was hard. You know, you'd be very lucky if you did. And uh, one of his famous, uh, so he made. I'm sorry, one when he. When he he cooked a lot of uh, European exotic dishes. And his favorite, uh, not his favorite, but his m most famous recipe was beef wellington. And it was, that's what people, when people made a reservation and, and they go there and to dine, that's what they ordered. And they loved it. And he hosted uh, a lot of celebrities 
and they uh, whenever they're in town or they live in town, they they wanted to go to the bakery restaurant. And uh, at first, it's not the bakery like in you know pastries like that, but uh, I don't know where you got the name of that. I don't know. So, uh, beef Wellington. If a lot of people don't, or if you're not familiar with that recipe, it's a steak dish uh, of English origin. It was made in England. And it's a fillet steak coated with pate or foie gras, you know, uh, duck liver, goose liver, excuse me. Okay. And uh, it's also from duck cells. I think it's like mushrooms and you do that. And you wrap it in puff pastry like that. So you roll it up. I saw this on a cooking show about a month ago. Uh, someone, uh, I think from Norway, made it. And it was very interesting. And uh, so you roll it up in a puff pastry. And you, you know, you wrapped it and then you, so you don't want to make it soggy. So you wrapped it in uh, like a, uh, what's it called? Like some sort of ham, something like that, you know, so it keeps it moist so it doesn't become soggy. And then uh, you cook it. And then uh, once it's done, you s cut it in slices and you eat it. You know what? When I saw that, it looked delicious. It really did. So they, they're not sure where they found, how it was named. Uh, there was a rumor it was named after a person's name called Arthur Wesley, the first Duke of Wellington in, on, in England. I don't know if that's true. They, there's, uh, there's no com confirmation on that. So, you know, so it looked delicious, and that's what people wanted. And I never tried it. I wish I did. I wish I tried it because it looks like uh, sometimes you didn't have to use steak. You can use uh, they can use sausage, salmon, or vegetarian if you'd like, you know. But uh, but beef Wellington is famous for its steak. It really is. So it's it's delicious like that. Okay, so um, back to Louis Sazmari. Uh, he was also. Um, he was on television. He was on, uh, I remember he was on Lee Phillips show. Remember her? She had noon break. He was always interviewed. He always, he uh, demonstrated cooking segments just like now, like Rachel Ray. And he was also on uh, Oprah Winfrey show, Good Morning America. He was featured in magazines, uh, TV commercials. Uh, and uh, so he was well known. He was famous. And, uh, he also, uh, he had a lot of fan mail from people. And he also, uh, he had people work for him to answer their fan mail. He was so busy, he didn't have time to answer every uh, every letter that's sent to him. Also, uh, he was also, uh, he, he was sort of a bookworm. And he also collected books and he read. So uh, he seemed like a very intelligent man. He really was. And uh, he also wrote some books and there's famous uh this is a famous cookbook, The Bakery. You can find it on Amazon, you know, if you'd like. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's out of print. So you could find a um, old edition. And then, in, but uh, I'm sure the Beef Wellington is in there. So that's, uh, that's probably interesting. And uh, unfortunately, the restaurant closed in 1989. Uh, maybe uh, I've heard it went out of favor. P uh, people started eating healthier. They didn't want all that heavy, you know, stuff like that, and that clogs your arteries. <laughs> I can understand that. So, uh, so it closed, and then um, Lewis uh, died October fourth, nineteen ninety six, on my birthday, and uh, so he was a he was a wonderful man. He seemed like a very nice man, and. Uh, you know, and every time I post something on my fa on my Facebook page for Van Chicagoland, and it's about the bakery or Lewis, you know, people have fond memories of that. They talk about the beef Wellington, other recipes like duckling, roast duckling, like that. Oh, that sounded wonderful. It really did. And then, uh, so he was just like uh, the Charlie Trotter of the time. <laughs> you know, unfortunately, Charlie Trotter died, which is a shame. I'll do, I'll do a podcast episode about him. So that would be interesting. Other uh, dishes were available. It was beef burgundy, chuck wagon beef stew, turkey and crab meat tetrazzini, chow mein, shrimp creole, barbecue 
pork fried rice. Oh, wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Delicious. He's, uh, you don't find that? That's very rare. And uh, so that's uh, that's about it for the bakery. I'm sorry to make your mouth water. <laughs> Made mine. Okay. Next up, I will talk about Mary D. Uh, she passed away on March 16, 2022. She was 85 years old, and she was a famous news anchor, television personality, philanthropist, and uh, if you mentioned her name and you saw her, oh, she put a smile on your face. She was a lovely lady, lovely lady. And I remember uh, my early memories of her from Channel 9, where she was uh, the anchor woman. She did, uh, I think, like the news breaks and in the afternoon. She also did the first lottery when lot when the Illinois lottery was first televised. I don't think she was the first. Uh, she maybe later on. I think it was Ray Rayner. I, I could be wrong. Um, but then uh, she was uh, she did the lot the lottos. I think I remember on the nine o'clock news she did that, and then uh, she was uh, and then someone else did that. I think it was Morgan. Uh, I forgot her name. Her first name was Morgan. Anyway, so uh, she was born Mary Frances Dorham, Dorham, excuse me, October 1st, 1936. Uh, she is, uh, she was born in Chicago and uh, she attended uh, Xavier University in Louisiana. Then she came to Chicago and her, let's see. So, uh, so her, one of her first jobs was working at a radio station at WBEE. And that's something. And that was, uh, I don't know what the call letters were. Yeah, it was, it was based in Harvey, Illinois. And she was known as Mary D. the Honeybee. And she was there for about eh, a couple of years. I think from 66 to 68. Okay. And then uh, in 67, 1967, uh, she made her television debut, debut. She had her own TV show. It was called the Mary D Show. This was on, yeah, it was on WCIU. It's on the U in Chicago. Back then, uh, the uh, Channel 26 wasn't on the air very long. It was on the air, I think it, aired, it premiered in 1964. So there wasn't much programming there. They showed old reruns. I remember someone told me there were bullfight, bullfighting and also the, uh, I can't, the Mole Queens TV show, you know, and, you know, Kitty Agogo. That was there. Anyway, she and then she uh, left that radio station, and then she had her own talk show, the Mary D Show, on WSNS Channel Forty Four, and that uh, that was 1970. That's when the TV station debuted. Also, she was on the rate. She moved from. Uh, she was uh, one of the first female disc jockeys on WSDM Radio, smack dab in the middle. Do you remember that? And then, then, then we go back to television. She hosted the uh, Mary D show on Channel 44. And uh, so that was, uh, so a lot of people remember her and she had a beautiful voice. She really did, you know. And uh, unfortunately, after she, in 1971, when she uh, had her show, she had a guest on. His name, he was a, uh, he was a psychic. His name was Alan Sandler. And they left. Uh, uh, the, after the show, they went out for dinner. And then they were approached by a man at her car. And they were they were held by gunpoint. And he pursued, you know, and then he, they made him drive to a remote area. And this gunman shot Mary D and Mr. Sandler twice in the back of their heads at point blank. Uh, and then they dumped them out of the car and they dumped them out of the car and they, he drove off. Uh, she was still alive and she managed to crawl to a highway. And then believe it or not, she, uh, you know, she was very lucky. There was an ambulance and they, and, and she was taken to a hospital and they didn't expect her to survive, but she did. She really did. Unfortunately, uh, Alan Sandler, the her guest, he died, and uh, that was a big, uh, that was a big story, a big headline. You know, it was a horrible, horrible tragedy that happened. 
And uh, so she managed to survive, and then she returned to the her TV show. But she stopped in 1972, so um, I don't know why. Maybe she didn't want to do it anymore. It was too much for her. And then she got hired at WGN. And she, uh, like I said before, uh, in the beginning, she did the news. Uh, she did the she announced the lottery, uh, you know, the lottery numbers. She did, uh, and she was also an, you know an announcer. She announced the uh, you know like the the bumpers, the WGN bumpers. You could hear her voice. You know, and then or. They did like community calendars, like uh, commercials like that. So it was her. Also, you know, she also introduced like the fall season of the TV shows on Channel 9. You know, once you heard her name, you knew it was her. And it was wonderful. And she also hosted telethons on television like that. And uh, so let's see. She was... uh, she was on Channel 9 for just uh, many years, I think from the 70s and 80s. I think she stopped then. And then uh, she was kept very busy with uh, charities, you know, and fundraisers. And uh, she was very respected, you know. And uh, when, when we heard that she passed away, oh, it was horrible. Because she, she, she was a, a lovely woman, very lovely. Yeah. And... Uh, you know, so that's the reason why I did the episode for her, you know, in her honor. You know, I hope everyone uh, would like that. So, um, you know, and uh, the tributes came along during the week and all that. And uh, so that's why I decided to do the podcast episode for her. Yeah. I even told him, I even, uh, when my brother called me from California, I told him about Mary D and he, he remembered her, you know, when we were growing up and he said, Oh, she was beautiful. Yeah. The, I, I loved her. Okay. So that's it for this episode. Um, so uh, I talked about the bakery restaurant and in Chicago and famous for their beef Wellington. And I also talked about Mary D and my memories of her. And also in the beginning in the program, I will have my anniversary show. Uh, probably it'll be episode 114. Uh, the hint was it was it's a famous, uh, well, let's just say it's a famous, uh, not a person. It's a thing in Chicago that we all grew up with. So I would discuss that. That's all I could say. It should be done either Tuesday or this coming next weekend. We'll see about that. It'll be a lot of fun. Okay, so this is Pico Stanis with episode 113 of Van Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. Uh, thank you for joining me. I enjoyed talking with you, and I hope you enjoyed listening to me. So, uh, so long, everybody, and here's Ray Rayner with some traveling music saying bye-bye for now. Take care, everybody. So long. We have to go. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>